Welcome to Expat Hydroponics. In this episode, we will cover all the conventional ways commonly used to cool a greenhouse, and then talk about cooling through transpiration. Our first try at hydroponics in our small greenhouse was successful at growing plants, but the lettuce turned out to be bitter and almost inedible. Although a few factors contributed to the bitterness, the main problem was heat. Here is a list of the most common methods used for cooling a greenhouse. First up is exhaust fans. You find these in many commercial greenhouses. They exchange air from the inside and outside of the greenhouse. Positive is they increase the airflow. The negative is they use electricity and this cuts into our slim profit margins. Our decision was to reject this as the outside and inside air temperature is about the same in our greenhouse. Next up is the water wall. The idea is to use cooling through evaporation. Air flows through the wall with the help of fans. The good is it cools by evaporation. The bad is it's expensive to buy or build. We reject it as cooling through evaporation doesn't work well in high humidity. Then we have the swamp cooler or what's also known as the evaporator cooler. It cools in much the same way the water wall does. Uh, the good is it cools the greenhouse by evaporation, but it adds unwanted humidity and it's the same as the water wall. It's high capital and running costs. So it was rejected as well. Next is UV coated plastic roof. The good thing is it reduces unwanted ultraviolet light. It has small additional capital costs, but it's really worth it in the end. Next is venting, opening the walls up for airflow. Instead of completely open, we did put mosquito netting to keep the insects out. It does allow for good airflow. It was a small additional cost. We accepted this. It's actually working out really good. Then we have shade cloth. It's really a double-edged sword. It lowers the temperature, but also reduces sunlight that some plants need. We accepted it and we use it conditionally. Actually, we use it rarely, but we only use it when there's extreme heat. Geothermal cooling is something I really like. I wanted to do it, but it was just too expensive. It cools the greenhouse by exchanging temperature between the nutrient solution and the ground. Uh, we rejected it because it was too expensive. I'll combine the last two, misting system or fogger and damping down. The damping down is just spraying down the floor of the greenhouse. And the idea is to get cooling by evaporation with both of these systems. The problem is, is that in the Philippines, it just doesn't work here. We have a high humid environment and evaporating by cooling is really inefficient. Let's switch gears to a process that NFT growers can specifically take advantage. Humans use sweating or perspiration to keep cool. Plants use a similar process called transpiration. The plant uses the sun's energy to power photosynthesis. Transpiration happens at the same time by shedding water through the plant leaves by evaporation. In summary, by keeping the tanks cool, we can benefit by both conductively cooling the plants and through evaporation via transpiration. Be careful, shade cloth slows down both of these processes, so use it sparingly. We started by burying a trash can for our first tank reservoir, and eventually we settled on burying an IBC tank, which holds about a thousand liters. This helps cool the water through heat exchange with the ground. Next is a video recreating the testing of our tank reservoirs we did last year. We tried out different sizes of tanks and took temperature readings at various times of the day. It's 27.4 in the IPC tank. And then over here in the metal tank, 27.6. And as you can see here in our plastic trash can, it's uh, quite a bit higher, 28.7 degrees. And even that's even though it's buried. Sorry for the busy graph, especially if you're viewing from a cell phone. This shows the benefits of burying a large tank deep. The initial advantage of burying the trash can is about two and a half degrees lower than the outside temperature. The large IBC tank gives us four degrees C or over seven degrees Fahrenheit lower. The last item on our list is fans. We use fans to give the plants an assist with the transpiration process. The additional airflow helps with the evaporative cooling process. We use DC fans as they are much more efficient and we power them from the solar panels on our roof. Well, that wraps it up. I hope this helps you with your hydroponic system. Thank you for watching. If you like, 
please hit the like button and subscribe. Take care. God bless.